Interesting facts about famous people. The best villains in John Wayne westerns. John Wayne wouldn't be the hero to so many western moviegoers if he didn't have the best bad guys to go up against. Only the dirtiest, down and out, lying and cheating villains in John Wayne's western movies would do. Of the villains we will look at today, only one villain made it out alive at the end of their respective western. Let's see who. If you enjoy this video, take a peek at my channel for more. The link's in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to share with your friends. The more the merrier. Tom Tyler, Stagecoach. Appearing in five films with John Wayne. Stagecoach, 1939. The Knight Riders, 1939. They Were Expendable, 1945. Red River, 1948. And She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, 1949. In Stagecoach, Wayne played the Ringo Kid, the film's hero, while Tyler played the villainous Luke Plummer. Dr. Josiah Boone, I'll take that shotgun, Luke. Luke Plummer, you'll take it in the belly if you don't get out of my way. Dr. Josiah Boone, I'll have you indicted for murder if you step outside with that shotgun. Luke Plummer, throws the shotgun on the bar, we'll attend to you later. Dr. Josiah Boone, to bartender after Plummer leaves. Don't ever let me do that again. Tom Tyler, as Luke Plummer, has one last moment in the spotlight as he walks through the doors of the saloon before falling to the floor, plum dead. A classic piece of cinema from the best Western director to ever come out of Hollywood. Robert Duval, True Grit. Duval doesn't actually get much screen time in True Grit, only really coming into his own with the climatic shootout with Duke towards the end of the film. Duval, as Ned Pepper, riles Cogburn by referring to Rooster as a one-eyed fat man, with a cry of, Fill your hands, you son of a bitch. Rooster rides towards Pepper and his gang like a man committed, outnumbered, but he eventually takes them all down, leaving Ned badly wounded. Ned then tries to kill Rooster, who is trapped under his horse saved when Robert Duvall is shot by Glenn Campbell. I'm shot to pieces. Pray for the man from Texas. Claude Aikens, Rio Bravo. Our villain here is one Joe Burdett, played by Claude Aikens, the catalyst around which the film will revolve. Before he is revealed as a ruthless murderer, Burdett indicates his cold-heartedness by throwing a silver dollar into a spittoon for Dean Martin as alcoholic Sheriff Dude to retrieve so he can buy a whiskey. When Dude goes to get the money, John Wayne, as Claude T. Chance, appears from almost out of nowhere and kicks the spittoon across the floor. Dude whacks Chance for interrupting his drinking plans. Burdett's men beat up Dude. Burdett then shoots a saloon patron who tries to intervene then moves on to another saloon. Chance staggers into the saloon after Burdett to arrest him. A bystander gets the drop on Chance. Dude saves the day by getting the drop on the bystander. Chance is free to clobber Burdett with the barrel of his Winchester. Of course, we all know Chance would have liked to have done the same thing to Dude after Dude struck him earlier. But for the moment they work together and drag Burdett off to jail. Forrest Tucker, Chisholm. Tucker and Wayne had words in Sands of Iwo Jima, leading to a fist fight, ending up laughing it off and becoming friends. It's good to see the fight in Chisholm, settling matters between them. I think we know who comes out the winner. So let's just say, Tucker as greedy land grabber, Lawrence Murphy, has the beating he receives from Wayne coming to him at the end of the film. 
Murphy, impaled on cattle horns, is an apt ending. Tucker's role is somewhat distracted by another storyline featuring Billy the Kid also running through the film. The showdown with Wayne is worth the wait. Richard Boone, Big Jake. Early roles of Richard Boone had him every week as that nice gunfighter, Paladin, in Have Gun Will Travel, and his role as Sam Houston in The Alamo. Also great at playing the bad guy in films like The Tall T and a real SOB in Ombre with Paul Newman. In Big Jake, he once again channels his inner demons as John Fane, overseeing a massacre at a ranch owned by Jake's family. The child killer that day is none other than Harry Carey Jr. Fane's gang kidnapped Big Jake's grandson, Little Jake. In the final shootout, a fatally wounded Fane asks Jake who he is. Being answered, I'm Jake McCandles. Fane says, I thought you were dead, before he himself sheds his mortal coil. I thought you was dead. Not hardly. Bruce Cabot, The War Wagon. I'm surprised by the number of times Mr. Cabot appears in a John Wayne movie. His roles became more substantial in Wayne's later westerns. He was very effective as a villain in The War Wagon and seemed to be suited playing the bad guy in a Wayne movie, as he was in his first Wayne western, Angel and the Bad Man. As a corrupt businessman, Frank Pierce, in The War Wagon, Cabot set up Wayne's character, Tor Jackson, then taking his land from him while Duke's in jail, before using our hero and his friends as target practice with his new Gatling gun. Bruce Dern, The Cowboys. Dern, when asked if he was intimidated by working with John Wayne, Bruce Dern replied, I might have been, but right at the start, Wayne said to me, I want you to do us a favour. He included himself, director, Mark Rydell, and the screenwriters. He said, from now on, consider me to be somebody you can publicly kick the shit out of 24 hours a day on the set, because I want these little kids playing the cowboys of the title to be terrified of you. He gave me permission to treat him like shit, so I was on him, talking back to him and stuff, for the first few days I was there. And he would do things like call out, Hey Mr Dern, would you get over here? I thought, hey, John Wayne gives you a Mr status, my first day, he's calling me Mr. How about that? That's pretty cool. Lee Marvin, The Comancheros and The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. I just read comments about the Comancheros. Several correctly praised the small part played by Lee Marvin. He is always reliable for standout performances. A couple of quotes from Marvin's character, Tully Crow. I got one rule, never go to bed without making a profit. Another, McBain, you try walking out on me, see how far you get, deal or no deal. Because of Lee Marvin's performance as Tully Crow, John Wayne recommended Marvin to John Ford as the villain of The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, 1962. How many actors have been killed by John Wayne twice? Certainly Bruce Cabot, but not many others I can think of. A member of this group is Lee Marvin, who got what is coming to him in both The Comancheros and The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. It's Marvin's part as the vicious Valance that guarantees him a spot on this list. He's almost a cartoonish villain with no redeeming qualities whatsoever. The relish with which Valance beats James Stewart in the beginning of the film with a whip and the way he taunts Stewart in the final shootout before going for the shot between the eyes makes him a memorable villain. Duke, as Tom Donifon, has no compunction in putting Valance down like a dog. Henry Brandon, The Searchers. I'm flying close to the flame of political correctness in making the Comanche chief, Scar, a bad guy. He was a very scary guy. 
I remember seeing The Searchers at a young age when I first saw the film. The reason I remember the film is because there is a scene early on in which the family are about to be attacked in their cabin and they sneak Debbie out of a side window, hiding in the cemetery. At this point we see a shadow of Scar appear on the gravestone behind Debbie. I'm watching a child who is in a very scary situation. It obviously had quite an effect on me. My empathy with Debbie quadrupled into sheer terror when the screen was filled with a close-up of Henry Brandon in full Comanche warrior regalia. He scared the yoo out of me when I was young. Scar was the most memorable of all the villains that appeared in a John Wayne Western. You might remember at the start of this video, I said only one of Wayne's nemesises survived. The last man standing goes to Claude Aikens in Rio Bravo. He doesn't die. He just gets duffed up by Dean Martin. Luckily, he didn't receive the Duke's wrath. A warm welcome to any new viewers. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to get my new videos. Share with your friends. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.